Egypt. I was sent up to Worksop, Royal Air Force Worksop, which was a, I mean, I, I actually was doing a lecture on a cruise ship not so many years ago. And somebody came up to me and said, I live in Worksop. There's no airfield there. And I said, I promise you there was. <laughs> Royal Air Force Worksop definitely existed and I was there. Um, so it's obviously been completely returned to farmland now. But in those days, it, was a, it, it had a hard runway and the accommodation was all Nissan huts. Had a nice officer's mess, mm -hmm. but the officer's accommodation was all Nissan huts with coke stoves and a batman to, to light the stove for you and all that sort of stuff. Amazing. Unbelievable, really. And um, that course basically was on vampires. The Vampire T11, which was a trainer, and then the Vampire 5 and the Vampire 9, which were single seat um, versions of the Vampire. And the object of that course was to teach you to fly in England. Mm. Was there a difference? Huge difference. Really? Could you explain that a bit to us? I can certainly explain that. I mentioned before the weather in Canada yeah. and the road system, all sort of roads that went north, south, east, west. Suddenly, I'm confronted with a flying environment with, with low cloud bases, murky weather, roads going in all, rambling around in all sorts of different directions, railway around, lines all over the place, towns that merged into each other. Uh. <laughs> I hadn't got a clue where I was most of the time. Anyway, it was quite a learning experience and uh, it was all brought home to me this business of navigation in England. I decided one day I was authorized for a, uh, for a general handling detail, uh, which really basically involved flying in the local area and doing spinning, stalls, aerobatics, all that sort of stuff, and then coming back to workshop. And my parents had a school in Harpenden, and that school incidentally still exists, and I'm, I'm personally, the chairman of the governors of that school now. And I thought I'd go back down to Hartenden and go and beat them up. And I hadn't planned this at all. I just did this on the spur of the moment. And I knew Hartenden was south of Worksop. Yeah. So I headed off southwards. And after a while I thought, hmm, I think I really ought to have seen Hartenden by now. And then I thought, gosh, this is a big city I'm flying over. I've never seen any place as big as this. And then I saw a river. And I looked down on this side, and it was the Tower of London, and on that side, it was the Houses of Parliament, and I thought, oh, oh. oh bother, I thought, or words to that effect. And I, <laughs> I was at about 6,000 feet, and I popped up into cloud, and I fled back north and got QDM's stairs to get back to workshop and duly landed. I must have landed with about a pint of fuel left in the aircraft. I mean, I, it was really very, very naughty of me. Did you get in trouble? I, I was never caught out. I spent weeks, not probably months afterwards, in mortal fear that I'd be rumbled, but I never was. And it was quite funny because, again, I was lecturing on a cruise ship a year or two ago, and an air traffic controller came up to me afterwards. He said, he said, I was an air traffic controller on radar at Heathrow, he said in 1957. This is January 19, January, March, no, March 1957, I suppose this would have happened. And he said, I, I remember seeing this aeroplane coming down from up north into the London control zone and then yeah. rushing back north again. He said, that was you, wasn't it? I said, I think it probably was. <laughs> I can imagine and, many sleepless nights though for you. And I think the lesson I learned from that, Mike, more than any other, is you don't ever do anything in flying without having planned it properly in the first place. Yeah. So that was another lesson learned. Many lessons then. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah, one of many lessons learned over many years. <laughs>